the blessings that God have had for us and that God has waited on us. A lot of times people allow the things of life to stop them. There are a lot of pressures of life that cause their praise, uh, for them to stop sacrificing their praises for the Lord. They allow uh, trouble. They allow their wilderness, instead of their wilderness making them, they allow their wilderness to break them. They allow flesh to rise up that they will get angry, uh, that they will not want to give God the praise. They will allow the sin nature of their life to stop them from searching and seeking his face. They will allow the sin nature of life to uh, cause them not to turn to him, but to turn more to the wicked ways of life. And then so many pray while they're on their journey in the wilderness. But I am reminded in the word of God, I want you to turn to Deuteronomy. This is going to be a teaching segment. Deuteronomy 2. Deuteronomy 2. God is so good. Deuteronomy 2. I just want to lift up uh, uh, 2 and 3. Deuteronomy 2, uh, verse 3. You have skirted this morning, this mountain. You have skirted this mountain long enough. Mm. You have skirted this mountain long enough. You, you, you have been in your predicament long enough. You have, you, you have went around in circles long enough. You have done the same old thing long enough. You have skirted this mountain long enough. Turn northward. Mm -hmm. Turn northward. Number four, and command the people saying, you are about to pass through the territory of your brethren, the descendants of Esau, who live in Sierra, and they will be afraid of you. Therefore, watch yourselves and carefully. God is getting ready to send you to a place to possess. You have been going through long enough. The same thing. You have been facing the same challenges, the same mountains, long enough. Now it is time for you to pass through this territory so that you won't continue to face the same challenges day in and day out. That you won't continue to see the same mountains week in and week out. There is a place that God wants you to pass through. There's a territory that God wants you to possess. Yes, he is a territory that God wants you to possess. Number seven, I love this. For the Lord your God has blessed you in all the work of your hand. He knows your trudging through this great wilderness. He knows everything that you're going through, everything you got to go through, every kill you must cry. He knows every sacrifice that you must make. He knows every lazy spirit in your bone and your body. He knows every time you don't want to. God already knows these things, but hadn't God been good to you? God has been with you in and out. God has been with you through everything in your life. Have you lacked anything? Have you been in lack of food? Have you been in lack of housing? Have you been in lack of shelter? Have you been in lack of your need? Have God supplied all of your need? You have absolutely lacked nothing, but still yet so many complain about this and so many complain about what they don't have and what they do need while they're in their wilderness. When you are in the valley of decisions in your wilderness, them things are to cause you to be humble. God wants to teach you some things while you're in your wilderness state so that you will know how to act when he brings you out. God wants you to humble yourself while you are in your wilderness so you can hear him. Hallelujah. So you can hear him. So you can hear him. A lot of people don't understand why am I going through the same state over and over and over and facing the same stuff over year in and year out. What have you done to change your situation? Amen. To change your outcome. You cannot go down the same streets over and expect a good outcome. You cannot deal and stay with the same people and expect a good outcome. You cannot hang around the same kind of people in the same territory and expect good things for you to get out of your wilderness. Sometimes it's who we hanging with it and, 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 and it's not all the time all the time who we hanging with a lot of times it's in what we talking about when we hanging out with people. Amen. Amen. You know how sometimes your spirit man will, 
will begin to gossip when you somebody else begin to release uh, complain or release and begin to talk about somebody. Uh, you, you, you will begin to gossip and don't even realize it. You will begin to start one conversation and the other person come in with another and then later on you find out that you two are talking about something that you have no business talking about. That kind of activity will keep you in the wilderness journey for a long, 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 long time. Because whatever you have done unto the least of them, the word of God said, you have also done unto me. And we all are created in this image, and we all are God's children. Amen. 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 But he, he, he said, number three, the Deuteronomy 2 and 3, he said, you have skirted around this mountain long enough. You to turn in a different dimension. He don't want you to continue in the same direction because if you keep in the same direction that you in, you're going to get the exact same results. You're going to end up where you begin. You're going to end up where you started. You're going to end up in the same place. But you have been working. You've been walking. And you've been trying. You've been you've been pushing. You've been moving. You've been doing stuff, but you're not getting any. What God wants to do. He, he, he want to take you into this territory so that you can begin to possess. Yes, he, 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 he said, you are more than a conqueror. Amen. You're more than. You, you, you're not just a conqueror of one situation, of, of one trial, of one thing. He said, you are more than a conqueror. Amen. A conqueror has power. A conqueror overcomes obstacles of Conqueror do not allow the things in their face and get the best of them. But he said, You are more than a conqueror. He has given you a land. He's given you a land to possess. Yes, he's given you a land to possess. Let's turn to Deuteronomy 8. Deuteronomy 8. Somebody want to stop seeing a same situation. Somebody's getting ready to come out of their problem uh, mountains. Uh, somebody's getting ready to let that mountain get removed out of their way. Somebody is not getting ready to go through the same thing that they went through in 2012. They went through last week. That they went through in 2014, 2013. That they went through last month. Somebody is getting ready to go through something that they went through yesterday. You are going to come out whether you want to or not. Because it is time for you to obey the Lord. He said you need to go in a different direction. Like he told them. He said, he said turn northward. It's time for you to switch your direction. If you want to switch your outcome. Switch your direction. If you want to switch your outcome. You have to switch your direction. If you want to switch your outcome. If you want the same outcome. Stay going in the same direction. Stay connected to the same thing. Stay connected to the same people. Stay connected in the same place. But if you want to switch your direction, you got to switch. Mm. You got to switch. Amen. 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 Let's go to Deuteronomy 8. Deuteronomy 8. Deuteronomy 8. Beginning at 1. Every commandment which I command you today, you must be careful to observe. Mm. Careful. Careful to observe. So many people are careful, but do they observe? They don't observe what the Lord is telling them. They're careful, but, but they don't observe. They they careful. They they, 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 they might they might repeat the word, but do they observe the word that they're repeating? Uh, they, they, they might be careful and they might quote the word, but do they observe the word that they're quoting? He said, in every commandment which I command you today, every commandment. He's giving you some commandments. You must be careful to observe. You must be careful to highly respect. Come on now. That you may live and multiply. That you may what? Live and multiply. That you may what? Live and multiply. And go in and possess the land which the Lord swore to your fathers. God has already gave you land to possess. He has swore to your fathers that he's going to give you a land to possess. And you shall remember the Lord your God led you all the way these 40 years in the wilderness to humble you. The reason why you've been going through, to humble you. The reason why you've been going in the wilderness situation, to humble you. When you are humble, you've been, you're, you're able to be taught. You're able to receive. You're able to hear. 
hear. You're able to listen. And some, sometimes we are so high and mighty, too high up and, 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 and not enough listening to God that we make the same mistakes over and over and over and over and over again. The reason why God allowed us to be in our wilderness state so that we can hear him, so that we can change, so that he can transform the way we are, transform the way we think, transform the way we carry ourselves, transform the things that we do. Amen. He said, wait these 40 years in the wilderness to humble you and test you. Mm. And test you. And test you. And test you. And test you to humble you. Then he want to test you after he's done humble you. Can you pass the test that God has allowed you to take? To know what was in your heart. Whether you would keep his commandments or not. God already know how you're going to turn out, but it's time for you to find out the new you. How you going to turn out? It's time to find out, you know, how people, they, everybody good to you when they down low. And everybody good when they don't have nothing. Everybody good to you. Everybody nice. And they also share. But let somebody raise up. Are they still going to be the same person? Are they still going to be good to you? Are they still going to share? Are they still going to love you? Are they still going to be kind to you? Are they still going to care? I always tell a person when they get up, you want to know the real them. You, you, you want to know the real person you're dealing with. When, when they get up and get a little something, something. Uh, when they clash just a little bit, you want to get to know the real person you've been, you been dealing with. You know, God, God, He wants our heart to be humble so that our heart is in a caring condition and position at all times. No matter what you go through, God wants a humble servant with a good heart. He don't need a servant that's boastful. He don't need a servant that's prideful and that know everything and that's, that, 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 that's better than everybody else, that don't like nobody. He needs a servant that is humble with a good heart. He's testing us. He would test you. He would test you when you're in your wilderness. And it's up to how we obey him and how we listen and how we humble ourselves when we're in our wilderness. See, there are Israelites that could have been out of the wilderness long before 40 years. But it took them 40 years to listen and to go north. But it took them 40 years to hear from God. It took them 40 years. The same description he gave them a long time ago, it took them 40 years. How many more years do you want to be in your wilderness in state? How many more years do you want to continue going through the same thing in season and out of season? How many more years do you want to keep crying broke? How many more years do you want to stay sick? How many more years do you want to be miserable? How many more years do you want to fake your praise and fake your worship? How many more years? This is all up to when you pass the test according to your heart. According to uh, Deuteronomy 8, 1, 2, and 3. So he humbled you, number 3. So he humbled you, allowed you to hunger, and fed you with manna, which you did not know, nor did your fathers know, that he might make you know that man shall not live by bread alone. Mm. But by every word, every word, every word, every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. A lot of times we only have one word that we live by and not willing to meditate and observe other words. Not willing to meditate and learn of other words. We only live by one word. And then one word ain't going to get us that. He said by every word that, 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 that Every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God, every word, every word, we have Genesis through Revelations, every word, every word, every word, chapter after chapter, verse after verse, no matter what you're going through, there's a verse, there's a chapter, there's an example in this Bible, the basic instructions before leaving uh, earth manual, which is the Bible, we have it all in the word. Now when it's time to come to church, Sunday church, if it's not a whole big crowd, you won't be seen because you don't have the microphone so that you can be noticed. When it's time for Bible study, you won't be seen because you're busy. You got a TV show or the game is on or you got to work. He said, man should not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. So wherever the word is that where you need to be. So that you can be enriched and enlightened. So that you can find out some things that you need to begin to observe more. God wants you out. He wants to bring you out of every wilderness state. Whether it's financial, whether it's health, whether it's bad relationship, whether it's bad community, whatever your wilderness state is, God wants you out. Whether it's no friends, 
God that was on your side when you was hungry and you didn't have no food. And God blessed somebody to bless you with food when you didn't have a place to stay. And God blessed somebody to be an open door for you when you didn't have a car to drive. And God blessed somebody to share their car or bless you with the car when you didn't have a job. God blessed that supervisor to hire you or bless the connection at the bus stop to tell you who was hiring for you to go and get your job. When God blessed you, it was God when, 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 when your loved one was in the hospital and you was bowing down and crying and thinking that they wasn't going to make it. It was God that raised them up off their sick bed. It was God that covered you in your prayer. It was God. It wasn't your friend. It wasn't your mama, your daddy, your sister, or your brother. It was God. We got to begin to give God the respect that he deserves. A lot of us, we don't want to respect God. It is time to show that I love you, Lord. I love you in person. I'm going to love you whether I'm down. I'm going to love you whether I'm up. I'm going to try my best to do be a better me for you because it was only you that covered me all of these years of my life. Hallelujah, give God some praise. I need to give God some praise. Right wherever you are, give God some praise. Because it was only God that fed you when you was in your wilderness. When everybody walked out on you and nobody cared. It was only God. By the grace of God, you hear. By the mercies of God, death was able to behave. By the grace of God, every footstep was ordered. By the mercies of God, God told death to sit down, get out your way. God told death to get away from you. God told separate itself from you. It was by the mercy of God for even God to give you a restoration season. By the mercy of God that you found your way out of the wilderness. Some people have been in the wilderness not 40 years but 50 and 60 years. And they see them there and have no way out. But it was God that put you in your right state of mind. It was God that showed you something that you just couldn't let loose. That you wanted every word. You needed not one word, two words, but every word that you began to learn. It was God it was God, it was God, it was God that was there for you. If it had not been for the Lord on my side, I don't know where I would be, and I don't even want to know. Hallelujah, give God some praise. God is a good God. God is a good God. He has absolutely let you lack absolutely nothing. You might have everything you want. You might feel like you didn't have everything you really need. But when you look back over your journey, you want to see God really bless me with every need that I had. Everything that was in my life, it was only by the graces of God that I had what I had. He has supplied your every need, whether you want it or not. You might have wanted chicken, and God still supplied you a meal. It may have not have been a meal that you wanted, but you didn't go hungry. Hallelujah. It's time for you to live by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. It's time for you to get in churches. It's time for you to get back to the word of God. It's time for you to get back to the workmanship of God. Being able to utilize your gifts for God. When you make room for God, you make less room for the enemy. You, you know the old saying, say, the idle mind is the devil's playground. And so many people wonder why the devil is messing with them so much because they're where the devil wants them to be. They're away from the word of God. They're away from the saints of God. They're away from prayer warriors. They're away from the duties of God. They're away from being a saint. They're away from the church. And they wonder what is going on in their life. And they wonder why they're in the wilderness because you decided, you decided to be set free. You decided to be set free for the enemy. You decided to be set free for the enemy. You decided to be set free for the enemy. Well, the enemy can have his way in your life. Well, the enemy can have his way with your children. Well, the enemy can have his way with your marriage. Well, the enemy can have his way with your purpose. Well, the enemy can have his way. It is time now for allowing the enemy to have power over your today and tomorrow and, and have power over your promises. God can't get grant you a promise until he knows that he can trust you with it. So this test is up to you according to Deuteronomy 8. This test is up to you, Deuteronomy 8 and 2. Read it for yourself. Read it for yourself. I'll read it one more time. And you shall remember the Lord your God led you all the way these four years in the wilderness to humble you and test you. When I was going through all of my trials and I was in my wilderness, it took me almost about 10 years in my wilderness. I believe it was about 10 years, 10 years. 10 years I've been in the wilderness. 10 years and I'm not ashamed. 10 years that I was disobedient. 10 years I was trying to obey in one area but was weak in 
know. Ten years, I, I was strong in one area, but didn't have the confidence and fear in other areas. See, God, he, he wants us to balance out for the right time and for the appointed time of season. He wants us balance out for the promises. He wants us balance. He don't want us arrogant, and he don't want us too much in this area and not enough in that area. He wants us to hold ourselves in the area, the area of our life. Are you humble in your attitude? Uh, are you humble in your character? Are you humble in your heart? Uh, are you humble in the way you care for others? Are you humble in the way you pray for others? Are you humble in your worship? Are you humble in love? Hallelujah. Are you humble? Because God, he, 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 he want to know what's in your heart. And he wants you to know what's in your heart. Sometimes our heart is just not right. We can be in the house of God, but our heart is not right. We can be prayer warriors and our heart is not right. We can be great leaders and evangelists and prophets and, and bishops and saints and, and, and praise team leaders, but our heart is just not right. God wants our heart to be right. Because when our heart is right, we will have that exact right love motives that will prove to our Lord. That, that will prove to our Lord, hallelujah, that we that we love him, that we prove. Uh, that's the only one you need to prove to. You just need to prove to our Lord and Savior of Christ that he called you. You need to prove to the Lord and our Savior of Christ that you deserve your promised land. That you pass your test. You need to prove. And the only way you can prove is not sitting down. You've got to get up and get active. You've got to activate your faith. You've got to activate the way you love people. You've got to activate the way you care. you got to activate responsibility in your duties. You have to activate. Hallelujah. It's time for you to switch your direction. Switch your direction. As the Israelites, they had to switch their direction. They kept getting facing the same thing over and over and over again simply because it was going in the same direction. Number four, your garment did not wear out, did not wear out on you, nor did your foot swell for 40 years. Mm, hallelujah. You should know in your heart in the man of man chastens his son. So that the Lord chasten you. And when we are not rulers, it's just something, it's something that, that God and the Spirit of God have to chastise us. It's, it's something about us that we, 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 we have to learn of Him. It's, it's something that God is teaching us. And, and it's something uh, that, that, that we're being punished. Yes, we're, we're, we're being punished so that we can understand uh, the respect of our Lord. We have to learn how to respect Him. It's not good all the time feeling uh, feel, feel, feeling like everything is all right. And, uh, I'm not going to say it's not good. It is sometimes when everything feels like it's all right. It's not good. It's not good when you have to face uh, tribulation. It's not good when you think everything is all right and then everything else fell like if it's ain't one thing. It's enough. It's not good when you're doing so good at paying your tithe and then everything else is still not working right in your life. It's, it's not good when you give it and you continue to sacrifice it. And it seems like everything is breaking loose in your life. It, it doesn't feel good. It, it doesn't feel good. But, but, but just because it don't feel good, we don't have to show. Amen, 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 amen. It's not always feeling good when you sacrifice and you're doing all you're supposed to do and everybody else around you are slacking. You still have to prove yourself and your heart and your willpower to God. No matter what's around you, what you see, and what you don't see, who you see, and who you don't see, who's here, and who's not here. You have to prove yourself to God. It's about you and the Lord. It's, it's make this thing personal. And stop worrying about what somebody else is not doing. It. Somebody else is not there. Leave other people's business alone. And begin to work on self. Begin to work on you. Begin to work on the model that God has given you to work on. It's too much to handle. Uh, you know, just worry about you. Work on your soul's salvation. And as you work on your soul's salvation, God will begin, yes, soul and their salvation. God is a good God. He is too good. He is too good for us to sit 
down on. He is too good for us to act like we don't care or act like we don't need him all the time. I need God not just when I'm doing bad. I need God just on a pretty black Sunday. I need God. I need God every day of my life. No matter what I'm going through, I'm doing good if I'm doing bad. I need God. I need God. And I'm not ashamed to say He was able to cause things to happen, work out miracles beyond miracles. Even before I needed a miracle, he had already made a way. Hallelujah. He had already made a way. God is a good God. Yes, he is. He, he is a good God. Number six, he said, therefore you shall keep the commandments of the Lord, your God, to walk in his ways and fear him. You should keep his commandments and you should fear him. I have enough respect for God to automatically know that when it's time for the church doors to be open to be there, I have enough respect for God to know that when it's time to pray, I need to fall on my knees and, and give God some praise because somebody's going to need my faith to pray for them. Somebody's going to need this prayer more than I need to pray. I have enough respect for God. Yes, 
power. You have power to release authority right now by you going forward. You don't sit on what God tells you to do. You don't sit on anything. You got to go forth in a manner that you never went forth. You got to show God something that you never showed him. You got to be anointed and appointed and approved. God want you in your promise land. He didn't make that land for nothing. He made that land for you. He predestined you to be in that promise land. There's a point in time, a day, and a season. There's an hour and a second that God has blessed you. He has every breakthrough, every blessing, every miracle, every heart desire ahead waiting on you. Now my question today to ask you is where are you? God, your God, he has already blessed you in your land, but you have some don't want to relocate because they will have to leave some things and some people behind them. You have some that, that don't want to recognize the land that God has written for them because perhaps they've been there and it wasn't what they thought it was going to be. Now, I'm going to tell you something there. They're going to always find a way. He's going to always find a way to upset you. He's going to always find a way to make you think that God didn't send you where you are. He's going to always make you find a way to discredit the work that's going on. He's going to always make you fear. He's going to always try to doubt in your heart and in your mind. So if God can, if, if the enemy can get you away from where you are, that God sent you to, from where you are that God sent you, he can take care of the that's waiting on you. Yes, you might get blessed here and there, but God has so much more waiting for you in your promised land. So many people, they're in lands, but are they in their promised land? The land that God had predestined for them, the land and the people that God had predestined for them, you can get there, but you might get there and be in the wrong land. I'll never forget many of years I was there was some things going on, and I was sitting there, and God said, you're doing the right thing. You, 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 you're running the right race, but you're in the wrong city. Good God Almighty. You're in the wrong city. You're in the wrong city. Your race is in the, the Georgia land, but you over here in North Carolina trying to run a race. That I, Jesus, you, you got to understand one thing. When God has something for you, your geographical area, it matters. Because God has a place he has predestined for you to have your promises. And in your promises, once you get to that land of your promises, God will bless everything in that land. And then, therefore, afterwards, you can go anywhere else and you can be extremely blessed. Because you are attached to the land of your promises. So no matter where you go after you attach yourself to the land of your promises, you're going to be blessed anyway. He's going to establish you. He's going to multiply you. He's going to bless you so much. No matter what comes, scorpions can come. They can bite you, but they won't even have the power to harm you. Demons can come. A thousand fall on your side, ten thousand at your right hand. But they won't be able to touch you. When God has for you is for you, nothing can come against what God has for you. And now this is the last one of this one, and then we're going to go on to the next one. Number 11. Beware that you do not forget the Lord your God by not keeping his commandments, his judgments, and his statutes, which I have commanded you today. On your own time, you continue to read Deuteronomy 8. You continue to read. You need to read it and you need to study it. Because there are so many great blessings in Deuteronomy 8. And he just wants you to remember him. As long as you're able to remember our Lord and Father, our, our Heavenly Father, as long as you're able to remember his statutes and his commandments, then he has blessings that are waiting on you. And in those blessings, your multiplication. God will bless the fruit of your labor. He will bless everything about you simply because you Humble yourself. You humble to hear him. You humble to observe him. You humble yourself. So make sure in all that you do for the Lord that you remain faithful, that you remain humble in all that you do for the Lord. Remember, you're not doing it for man, you're doing it for the Lord. But as you're doing it for the Lord, then man will surely see you. And when man see you, it's something about you that man will see that will attract them to the Lord. That is why it's so good for you to be obedient. It's so good for you to be getting to 
observe what the Lord is telling you. Because in your observing of the Lord telling you things, then other people will be able to reflect on your life and they will be able to say, I want what she got, or I want to be like him, or something about him that I need to know is some things I need to do what he's doing or what she's doing so I can get what they got. It's not the point of being jealous, it's the point of your life will be able to illuminate the Christ in you to be able to draw others to you. That's the season that God wants you in. And when you're doing that, he will add all things unto you. All things. The houses, the cars, whatever you want, the business is the business. Whatever you want. He says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and Christ. He said, and all these things will be added unto you. So every day, all you got to do is seek what's right. All that you seek what God needs you to seek. Do what he needs you to do. Observe the things he needs you to observe and follow his commandments and be a statue for him, meaning standing strong in the word, standing tall and broad for him so that other people can see it's good being a saint. Hallelujah. Give God some praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, we just thank you right now with the mighty name of Jesus for this mighty word. Uh, Lord God, for you told us, Lord Heavenly Father, to switch our direction, Lord God. Lord Heavenly Father, give us the power and the strength to honor you every day, every day and 24 hours of the day, every second of the day, in the name of Jesus. Lord Heavenly Father, bless us to be able to overcome and put our flesh under subjection, Lord God, so that we can be a more obedient servant, Lord Heavenly Father. We want to live in our promised land and we want to be a better people. Lord God. I ask you to strengthen us where we're weak right now in the mighty name of Jesus. And make us strong Lord God. But we know Lord Heavenly Father, if it was not for you on our side, I don't know where we would be and I don't want to know. But continue being a fix all around us Lord Heavenly Father. Do what you need to do to get us right. And bless our minds Lord Heavenly Father. What we will want in our heart desire to live off of every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. But we In the name of Jesus. And let absolutely no weapon form against us, our truth, our hope, our purpose, our worship, our praise, Lord God. Lord, Lord, upon our sacrifice of praise, us tithing and giving, and the way we love and the way we care, even against our family members, Lord, Lord, Father. Do not let our hearts be hard. Lord God, in the name of Jesus, keep us in a forgiving state, Lord God. For we know you have always been forgiven us. Lord God, bless our hearts to forgive our brothers. Forgive our sisters, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, to be better representatives of you, to be finer examples of your word. We just thank you, Lord, and Father, and bless us so that we can be more of a blessing to your people, Lord God. Those that are lost, let us not scar our nose up at them, but let us love. For you said in your word of God that love comes a multitude of sin. And we love you, Lord. We love you. We love you. We love you. Hallelujah. Amen. God is so good.